has been with LinkedIn for close to some years, and uh, she's a she's a relationship manager at Ten Left Media, who are the exclusive partners for LinkedIn in Africa. She's currently handling some of Africa's big brands players on the business front, which which are which varies from the likes of um, financial services, tourism, and automotive automotive industries. She enjoys growing and nurturing these brands on LinkedIn. And she holds a double major degree in communications, that's media and journalism, and also furthered her studies and went on to graduate with an honors degree in brand leadership. Her professional career started back in 2014, where she worked for a reputable digital media house and has never looked back since. Starting as a sales support, she has since leaped from South African powerhouses such as the uh, Habari Media, Spark Media, Web, Web Influencia, and now Ten Left Media, allowing her the allowing her the opportunity to represent local and global brands such as the likes of LinkedIn, BBC, BBM, ESPN all for women and more. She prides herself in always showing up and bringing her A game with all tasks that are given to her. And she is referred to as the LinkedIn expert and absolutely love what she does. In her free time, she enjoys spending time, spending time with family and catching up with folks and outdoors. And um, I like to hand over the whole section to the training section to uh, our LinkedIn um, trainer. Thank so you so much for that intro, um, Foster. Um, hello to everyone. I'm just checking if you can hear me. Okay, perfect. And um, just before I start, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, John, if you can just give me a thumbs up. Are you able to see the presentation format? Not yet. Okay. Should be showing up. up. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, perfect. Um, good morning to everyone. Good afternoon to anyone maybe calling in or dialing in from outside of Ghana. Um, as introduced by Foster, my name is Ayan Dambata. I am a relationship manager for Turn Left Media, who are the exclusive sales partners for LinkedIn in Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, my mandate today is to really help you guys better understand the LinkedIn platform, how you can better position yourself as individuals, as women in business, um, and really how you can capitalize on the platform just by, by using it as a voice for yourselves as an expert in your particular field and industry of work. Um, and what I hope to cover in today's session is the following. So number one, what we will learn today is we'll just look at how we can build a strong LinkedIn profile that attracts attention. We'll look at developing a plan to help you boost your professional brand with LinkedIn. Um, and also looking at, you know, growing the size of your LinkedIn network, how to share content that makes a difference with your prospects, um, also engaging and nurturing your audience. And I think one of the most important ones today is really understanding and embracing your female voice with thought leadership. Um, and, you know, during uh, the session, obviously, I do allow all of the questions uh, to come forward. John Bowles, who is on the call as well as Fost, will be administering that for me. So you can pop those questions in the chat section. Please, please, please do engage as much as possible. Ask those questions. Um, and Turn Left Media, partnered with LinkedIn, have offered to give away five premium accounts um, at the end of this session. So I'd love to see all of those wonderful ladies engaging with me and asking the questions because at the end of the day, we are really just trying to make sure that, you know, we get the best out of you at the end of this and hopefully get you, you know, into the star status and the star level of being uh, a pioneer on LinkedIn and positioning yourself as a great voice for your business, as an advocate for the company you work for, um, et cetera, et cetera. So Foster and John, please do let me know if there are any questions in between. Otherwise, I will have some sections where I stop uh, and ask for, for the questions. 
So without wasting any much more time, I want to get straight into it. And I want us to put on our, uh, our hats of, you know, social media usage and how we kind of use social media across different uh, networks. When you think about, you know, the mindset in which you have and how you engage across different platforms, it, diff it, it really differs, you know, based on your personal networks as well as your professional network. So when you go onto a platform such as, you know, maybe, for example, Instagram or Facebook, you really go there because you're spending time. So you go there because you want to keep up to date with what's happening with your friends and family. You want to stay entertained and maybe also, you know, just get some trends and what's happening with regards to your personal interests. Um, and then you come onto a platform such as LinkedIn, which is a professional network. And we really see that, you know, when you're on LinkedIn or when you're on a professional network, you're there to invest your time. So a lot of the times our members come onto the platform because they write, they're really trying to keep up to date with what's happening within their industry. They want to, you know, for example, see what's happening in current affairs. So with the, you know, current situation of COVID-19, I'm sure many of us have gone to, you know, reputable sources such as LinkedIn to see, you know, what is newsworthy, you know, what's happening currently, what business looks like for us at the moment, and perhaps in the future, even though it is unknown. Um, and also our members come onto the platform because they want to stay up to date with what's happening, you know, um, with other brands. So if, for example, you represent a brand or you are a brand yourself, um, we have about 23% of our audiences that raise their hand and say they want to hear from brands. So this gives you as an individual and as a brand the opportunity to start having conversations with these people organically because they've shown interest uh, not only in you as an individual but also in your brand. With that being said, obviously consumers also go ahead and they approach platforms with a very distinct intent. Um, and, you know, on LinkedIn, we know that our audiences come there because, you know, they're searching for new opportunities. Perhaps you're coming onto the platform because you want to improve your career, but we also see that they want to learn more, um, you know, from leaders and experts. And I'll talk a little bit more about, about that later on, you know, in terms of how you start following influencers just to help shape your professional journey as well. So when we look at um, LinkedIn, we always look at it as a, a very high quality environment. Uh, and why we say that is because it's this experience where you have, you know, an uncluttered, um, you know, uh, experience where it's just you and the newsfeed or, you know, the connections that you want to see uh, coming and appearing up on your newsfeed. The, the, sp the space is very brand safe. Um, and, you know, it's very controlled, it's very trusted, both between individuals as well as brands themselves. So there's this ability to, you know, have transparent and meaningful conversations with your audiences uh, as well. With that being said, um, since, uh, you know, the birth of LinkedIn, the mission has always been to connect the world's professionals to make them more productive and successful. So if there's anything that I would want you to take out of the end of this session is how do you make yourself more productive and successful? Um, both for yourself as an individual, as a professional in this regard, but also for the people who you connected with. So the content pieces that you put out, um, you know, the, the, the articles that you start to engage in, how are, how are your connections finding value in your opinion and in how you have decided to position yourself on the platform? With that being said, um, it's for the second year in a row that LinkedIn has actually been deemed and announced the most trusted platform. So not only is it brands who feel safe in this space, but also individuals likewise. So if you think about your own behavior across different um, social media platforms, you know, you do tend to behave a little bit differently, like I said earlier on. So on LinkedIn, it's really about having this mindset of being very mindful about how you engage and about how you interact with your audience or with your connections and with brands um, uh, likewise as well. So we find that people are a lot more diplomatic uh, in the way in which, you know, they engage because they're very mindful of their own professional identity, their own professional reputation, and how they want to position themselves as well as how they want to be seen by their peers, by their, you know, current or uh, prospective 
prospective clients as well. So just looking at the you know, landscape of LinkedIn and what the numbers look like, globally, we have 675 million members, which is a huge and a massive uh, amount of you know, uh, people. If you think about you know, the professionals globally, and of that 675 million members, we have 30 million members who, I mean, million companies uh, within that. Uh, comprising of that, we also have about 50,000 skills and, you know, this massive number, which still is so mind boggling to me of 109 billion updates that are viewed, um, which is really, really huge. And if we look now go, you know, a little bit deeper and we look at that, that's 9 billion of content impressions that are being served on a weekly basis. So that already kind of tells you a lot about, you know, what the platform is, you know, obviously we have, you know, this, this idea of LinkedIn being uh, a place where you're looking for a job or a place where people have gone and placed their digital CV to be seen. Yes, of course, it still does have room for that. However, we've seen this massive and drastic change from not people from people not really just being actively looking for jobs, but also coming onto the platform because they want to consume content and they want to read up on articles, whether it be short form posts or long form posts, but they actually just want to really get a better understanding of what is happening in the industry. They want to grow themselves. They want to follow, you know, peers and connect with leaders who, you know, they aspire to be like uh, within the business industry. And of course, in Africa, uh, we know that mobile, we are mobile first and a mobile led uh, company. Uh, I mean, sorry, a, a continent rather. So with that being said, we have seen a high rise in mobile usage. Um, but also, you know, I want to also highlight the fact that LinkedIn is one of the platforms that within the workspace. So you find that if you go to workspaces, some social media networks or um, uh, uh, platforms have been blocked. But LinkedIn is one of those that are still, you know, really uh, pushed forward by employers. And that's because it has a place to really empower professionals. It has a place to grow you as a professional where, you know, with, whether it be in between your breaks in the morning before you start your workday, you age able to go and read up a quick article, go and see what's happening in your current affairs or in the industry that you're working in or within that field that you, you're working in. So definitely, you know, has room for you to be able to make usage of LinkedIn across all devices, whether it be your laptop at home or at work, your, your PC, I mean, your, your mobile device as well as your tab. So what do our, you know, members on LinkedIn look like? I want to, you know, kind of show you what our African members are doing. If we look at the numbers, in Africa, we have 36 million members on LinkedIn at the moment. Now, that's a huge number if you think about already the opportunity to be able to connect um, with various individuals, with various professionals across different industries. So if we look at the, you know, the footprint that we have, for example, in South Africa, we're sitting on 7.8 million members. Ghana has a really good pool size, which is growing on the daily um, uh, of 1.5 million members. So if you're looking to connect and, you know, speak to other African leaders, senior decision makers across Africa, you have this ability and opportunity to do so on this platform. If you think about it, you know, you know, the space that's very beat to be uh, gives you you know the opportunity to talk to people who are economically driven who have a really strong economical voice uh, within the society and within the business sphere as well so you want to you know make sure that when you think about how you build your profile which we'll talk about a little bit later you stand out but also that your profile is attractive to those um, peers or to those connections that who you would like to make um, a connection with later on in your in your professional journey so what do our linkedin members do and our linkedin members are people such as myself as well as yourself so they come onto the platform because like i said earlier they want to understand what's happening within the industry so for example if you're working uh within the airline or aviation industry you probably likely to start following companies 
or groups or interacting with peers, which are also in the same industry. In that way, you're able to really keep up to date and understand what's happening within your space and how you as an expert, but also as a professional can start contributing within that space on the platform too. Our members are also coming on to, you know, follow expert advice through long form posts. So, you know, you have this opportunity to go and look for the people you, you know, you look, you aspire to or you look to uh, within your professional journey. So, for example, we have this pool of influencers on the platform who you're able to start following um, and really just getting some insights on, you know, how they perhaps started their professional journey, where they are at now and what they do to continually improve themselves, you know, as for example, women in business. So for the people that we have, um, and, uh, you know, just a small example here in Africa, we have the likes of your Pumzilim Lambunuga, who is an influencer on LinkedIn. We have Oprah Winfrey, who continually put up posts, you know, that will really help equip you as a professional. But in turn, also, we obviously then ask you to, you know, do the same. Start to think about where you are an expert at what topics really you know matter to you and what are you passionate about to drive the conversation is it a topic that's around women in business is it a topic about being a leader within your space how do you start shaping and crafting those kind of conversations to really help position you as an expert within your field and I'll start talking about that a little bit later in terms of you know thought leadership also, we can't shy away from the fact that LinkedIn obviously, um, you know, is a job portal. Um, but like I said, you know, earlier on, it has become more of a content driven platform. However, we still do have about 13% of people who are actively looking for jobs on the, on the platform, which is why even though you're not currently looking for something, just make sure that your profile is always up to date with, you know, the skills and everything that it needs um, within it. Lastly, um, as a member, our members take up, you know, something called short courses on our LinkedIn Learning Academy or our LinkedIn Learning Sites. And what this does, it gives you the ability to take up, you know, short courses on the platform. So whether it be that you would like to improve yourself within your field of study or within your career, um, or you really just want to, you know, jack your knowledge up, you know, in various topics, it gives you the opportunity to to do so through LinkedIn Learning. And LinkedIn has been so kind in the last uh, two months actually to open up a few free online courses through LinkedIn Learning just to equip its members during this COVID-19 season. So, you know, it's really around, you know, thinking about taking up courses on remote um, working, how to manage your time, you know, thinking ahead for the future um, as a business leader as well. So, you know, that being said, with those premium accounts that I talked about much earlier on, you are able to unlock all of LinkedIn Learning's courses by having a LinkedIn premium account. So again, I urge you to obviously engage as much as possible, ask me those questions, and you could be one of the lucky winners of the premium account. So when are our audiences actually engaging on topics? Um, within the space or within LinkedIn. So we find this very interesting trend that happens on LinkedIn, where during the week, we have quite a lot of people who are on the platform. However, over the weekend, those very same people spend more time on the platform. And what that means is that obviously over the weekends or during holidays, people have a lot more time to, you know, really sit back, relax and read their articles, read those long form posts that they may have saved, you know, during the week. Of course, during the week, because, you know, it's really crazy, busy working hours where we, you know, chasing deadlines or we're trying to, you know, uh, get to a pitch or answer all 5,000 emails that we may have in our inbox, we don't always have the leisure or the time to sit back and read uh, up on articles. But on weekends, we find that our members actually spend more time on these articles. 
Um, so, you know, I know that a lot of my clients will come to me and they'll say, uh, you know, is it a good time to actually be present on the platform over a weekend? Is it a good time to be present during holidays? And the answer is absolutely yes, because that is when we see that our members spend more time. And that's also an opportunity for you as a member to also engage with your peers and with your connections as well. So that's the first part of my uh, session. And I want to know if there are any questions at the moment before I proceed. Foster, John, anything? And uh, someone was asking, how do, how do I get access to free online courses on LinkedIn? So Foster, what I'll do is after the session, I hope you, you have everybody's email addresses. I'm sure you have because they've registered. I'll share the link with you. Um, John, if you do have the link, perhaps you can share it on the chat section just for everyone to be able to access it. And, access it. Um, and that has about 16 different free online courses that LinkedIn has made available. So if John, if you can find I'll do that. the chat, thank you very much. That. Any other questions before I proceed? Um, someone asks, how does a member become an influencer on LinkedIn? Okay, very good question. And we get that question quite a lot of times on the platform. Um, unfortunately, obviously, LinkedIn isn't built like, um, you know, Instagram or Facebook, where it's easy to be an influencer. They really take their time in terms of, you know, finding their influences. So it's on LinkedIn, it's not necessarily about aiming or, t or hoping to be verified, but it's more so positioning yourself as a thought leader within your space where you will be recognized by the people within your industry. So in short, to answer your question, it does take a very, very long time and it also takes a lot of effort and you also would have to be in a certain level of seniority to, you know, even be noticed, but that does not mean, um, you know, you shouldn't be present and you shouldn't be active. And I'll talk a little bit more about how you can be a thought leader within the space and within um, the platform as well. But to answer your question, it would take a little bit of a while and you'd probably need us to help you on that. <laughs> um, Nadia is asking how she can post her um, content or her essays there uh, during this COVID-19 and who can edit it before she posts. Sure. So Nadia, you are, so if you go onto your LinkedIn, you'll see that LinkedIn um, gives you a few options. So the one option is to put up a normal post and what we call that is a short form post. So that would maybe be like a one or two liner or, you know, a small or short paragraph. And then there's also a section where it allows you to go and write an article. And where you go write that article, which is, would be what we call a long form post, um, you then over, obviously able to have a title, you can hyperlink uh, to, you know, specific URL or landing pages, you can add images and pictures, and you can really delve into a specific or particular topic that you're writing about. Um, and then in terms of, you know, having that edited or checked before you set it live, I would, uh, you know, advise you to perhaps, you know, get a peer, a colleague or a friend who you really trust to, uh, you know, proofread it first before you set it live. But um, yeah, also I know there are a few tools that will help you check if the grammar is correct, such as Grammarly uh, and all other ones as well. Tamala was asking how one's LinkedIn profile should look like. Um, that is an amazing question because that's actually the next part of our section. So um, I don't know if there are a few more uh, questions. However, that's actually what I'm going to be stepping into just now, Tamala. So let me, I won't waste too much time after these few questions. I think the next few questions is about the, how the, the profile is supposed to look like and other stuff. So. Oh, amazing. I'm so glad that I have that content ready for you, ladies. <laughs> so, Foster, if that's okay with you, uh, are you happy for me to move over to the next section of the presentation? Yes, please. Which just to con exactly just that. To, just to confirm, I have loaded, uh, I think, the link for the free courses into the chat. If anybody wants to access that, uh, is in there. Awesome. Thank you very much, John. Much appreciated. 
So, I mean, the frequently asked question, how do I get my profile right? Um, and we have a, a nice section just speaking to specifically that. But as this title says here, your journey starts with a really, really great profile. So you want to obviously make sure that, you know, it's easy for people to find you. And the best way in which you can do that is by, you know, choosing really strong and meaningful background images, um, looking at crafting compelling taglines, um, writing summaries that really embody your message by keeping it SEO friendly. So if I were to go onto a search engine um, and look for, you know, women in mining and metals, for example, you know, I'd love to see that your name comes up first if that's the industry that you work in. Um, you know, adding content and assets that really speak to who you are as a professional and getting recommended, etc. So I'll get in, I'll delve into all of these. Um, um, right now. The first thing uh, or the first step that you want to make sure you have right is making sure that you add a photo. Obviously, people relate very well by putting a face behind any name. Um, that's how they're able to see, you know, who you are as a personal, but also as a professional. I think one thing that I really want to remind all the ladies on this call is that LinkedIn is obviously a professional uh, platform. So you want to almost do away with, you know, having your, your, your pets in the picture or your, your friend or your husband or girlfriend, you know, it's a place where you want to put position yourself as a professional. Uh, those other pictures have their own place and room uh, within other platforms as well. But really, you know, give us a picture that shows us who you are as a professional. And I think you guys saw my picture in the beginning. Uh, it's not, obviously, it's not just the headshot, but, you know, in, in what I have chosen, I just wanted to obviously bring across my personality at the same time by showing people that, you know, I'm ready for business, I'm ready for conversations, and I'm welcome you within my network as well. So, you know, we always go and say, you know, look for a really nice headshot with a beautiful, nice, clean background or something where, you know, that represents the business in which you work for, but make sure that it is a picture of yourself. Um, and then also one space that a lot of our professionals or our members, you know, don't use enough or don't use as much or possibly aren't aware of it is that blue space behind your actual profile image. So that blue space works as a free banner for you to use for yourself. So you can go ahead and either, you know, put an image that represents the industry that you work within. You can place an image there that um, uh, positions you or, or speaks as an advocate, uh, uh, positions you rather, sorry, as an advocate for the brand that you work for. So, Using myself as an example, again, what we've done at Turn Left Media is that we've all agreed to have a uniform background. Um, and what that means, basically, if you go onto all of our profiles, you see, you'll see that our background images are the same. And that's because we are positioning ourselves as advocates for the business um, and also just to show to people who we are as Turn Left Media. So obviously, this is a personal profile in as much as it's a professional profile. It's absolutely up to you what you prefer to have on that, um, that background space. All I urge you to do is to make sure that you put something there and not leave it blank or leave it blue. And we find that with people who add pictures, you'll obviously see that, you know, you'll get nine times more connection requests. We've seen that there's a lot more profile views and also your inbox will probably start to get a little bit more busier than usual, again, because people are able to relate to you and they see who you are. And then step number two is you want to draft a really compelling summary. What that means is that you're not going to, you know, write an essay about your 20 years of experience or your five years of experience, but you're actually going to give us an elevator pitch of what you are as a professional looks like. So 40 plus word, keep, keep it cute, keep it simple and, you know, get to the point. Where you want to actually give us more detail is on step number three. And that's where you actually tell us more about your work experience. So here is where you have the opportunity to go and now give us what your job title is, what your roles and responsibilities are, um, what you do on a daily basis, if that's what you want to put there. But really, you're now starting to tell us more about your experience, what you're doing at the moment, what you've done before. And then that can obviously 
now start to paint a much better picture of, you know, where your expertise lie and what you are or who you are rather as a professional. And again, we see that with profiles that have more detailed experience, they have more profile views and also get more connection requests similar to the previous slide. Step number four is you want to add examples of your work. And I know people shy away from this a lot, but again, it's a reminder that you obviously want to pride yourself as a professional within the space that you work in. So, you know, whether it be presentations that you've done, whether it be um, articles that you've written or videos that you've taken, this is your professional and online portfolio where people have the opportunity and the ability to go in and see what great work you've done. So you're almost telling us a really, really good story about what your professional journey looks like so that when we go in there, you can already see what type of a person you are professionally. And then step number five is really around thinking about the skills that you embody um, with, within your, sp your, your space or your line of work. So, you know, go and add those skills and get endorsed as well. But I also want to emphasize the fact that you want to also stay transparent, you know, because the skills that you put in uh, your, your profile are the very same skills that you need to be able to demonstrate whenever somebody, um, you know, connects with you, networks with you or want to do business or work with you. Um, we also again see that members with you know who've added skills and have gotten endorsed um, get receive up to 17 times more profile views. Obviously being viewed is you know a really big thing on LinkedIn because then you know that you are in fact doing something right. You are standing out and you're probably a little bit more ahead than your peer your peers within that industry. And also, I'd urge for you to go and request recommendations. So, you know, think about the people that you're working with right now already. So your colleagues, your clients, your boss, your former boss, if you left on a good note, I hope, um, your clients that you've done business with in the past, but start to, you know, grow a nice, strong, solid um, base of recommendations that can sit here so that when I go onto your profile, I can go and see that, oh, wow, you know, uh, for example, Kathy is really, really great and amazing uh, in event planning. So-and-so has worked with her, you know, in this job, that job, and that job, and this is where her skills are. So try as much as you can to get those recommendations uh, from people you're working with and people you have worked, at, worked with as well. And then lastly, make sure that you don't forget these, um, you know, four key elements. Put in your, loca your location, tell us how, you know, your level of education. Also, you know, show us whatever publications you may have uh, that put up publicly. And lastly, you know, show us what accomplishments you've had within your professional journey as well. The more we have, the more star status your profile becomes and the more visible it is. And again, like I said earlier, the more ahead you are from your peers and also just, you know, positions you as this really strong expert and a thought leader within your space and line of work. So in also, you know, maintaining that strong profile, you want to make sure that you you're engaging and you're staying present within the platform. And how you do that is by gaining knowledge in which you can do that is through following companies. So, you know, if you look at your LinkedIn profile, uh, the quality of your newsfeed is all very dependent on the people that you are connected with, as well as the people that you follow and the companies that you follow. So, for example, if you're not happy with what you're seeing on your newsfeed now, perhaps it's a good time to go and take, up, take some time to clean up the people that you're connected with, to clean up the companies that you follow, so that they actually are a better representation of what you want to see on your newsfeed. And that's how you'll get the really good qualified content that you're looking to gain. You can also, like I said earlier on, start going to follow really influential people uh, and, flu and influences within the space. So, you know, gaining insights from what these people have done right, what they've done wrong, what the learnings have been and how you can take that back for yourself, um, you know, as a business player and go and equip yourself uh, the best way you can. 
The next way is also, you know, searching at scale. So LinkedIn is a platform that has so much insight and so much data to share, um, you know, and you can go and find this organically. So if you go onto your profile, you can go and, you know, search for certain locations, industries within those locations, perhaps, you know, company names and company sizes as well. And what you can start doing is you can start to learn more about what is trending within those spaces, what is trending within those places. And what that does is it informs you on how, you know, you should engage, what articles you should put up um, and what content really matters to the people who you have in mind or what content really matters for your audience uh, when you have started to clearly define the people who you want to be connected with. And then you also want to customize your feed. So this speaks back to the point I made around gaining knowledge and following companies. But you know, you have this ability to go and sit in, in your settings and improve your, your feed. So what that means is that you can go and ask LinkedIn to start recommending to you pages that you know are in line with your profile pages that are in line with what you have put down you know for example in your skills or what you have been endorsed in as well you can go and choose to hide particular posts that you no longer want there or you can delete them completely you can go and hyperlink certain things but you can really start doing really incredible and exciting stuff with your own con content and with the content that you want to see appear on your news feed as well. So what I would advise for you to, you to do is to just go and play around with your profile as much as possible. Go into your settings, check your privacy settings, check what it is that, who it is that you're following. Um, you know, go and look at the recommendations that LinkedIn is recommending to you and see if those are people that you want to start following or connecting to as a business um, professional as well. And then also you want to, you know, think about being really uh, intentional with, with your influence. And why that's important is point number one is influence is, not, is often not discussed but it is definitely seen. So you want to make sure that you stay strong and that you stay present um, and also visible in whatever topic that it is that you've chosen to, you know, start to talk about or whatever uh, space that you want to feel, you feel strongly or passionate about. Point number two is the average person has the potential to influence 80,000 people or more in their lifetime. And if I bring this back home onto our LinkedIn platform, if you think about it, on average, our members have about 100 or so connections. So if you go and put up a post, you have this ability to connect to 100 people. And of those 100 people, they will go and extend your message to another 100 people. So you can already see how you're able to go and extend your voice and be seen as a thought leader and be recognized as somebody who really knows what they're talking about within their particular expertise. And then it's also an opportunity to bring meaning and purpose to your employees, to your colleagues, to your connections, as well as your peers. So, you know, we always talk about the fact that LinkedIn is this ecosystem where you given the opportunity or rather that you have the opportunity to talk to different types of audiences in one ecosystem. So you have this opportunity or ability to talk to your employees or to your colleagues, and we call that business to employee. You also have this opportunity to then go and talk to your customers or your current clients, and we call that business to customer. And then thirdly, you can go and talk to potential customers or prospective customers or stakeholders, and we call that business to stakeholder. So this is a place, an environment where you can have different type of messaging across these different audiences as well, which isn't very likely or you can't really find on other the platforms as well. So as a professional, how do you then find that voice to speak, to, excuse me, to these different audiences um, in different ways? An example I have here is um, of this lady that we see in front of our screen, um, who is uh, Dr. Ola. So Dr. Ola is the founder of a, of a company called Flying Doctors Nigeria, and she established the first 
air ambulance service in West Africa, flying doctors, flying doctors Nigeria. Um, and she was inspired to start the company after, unfortunately, her younger sister died while traveling in Nigeria without access to medical care. So I think what her goal here was is to help people like her sister in the future so that they would have you know access to medical care and what she did is she took to LinkedIn to find the people who would be able to help her with this project of hers so she went and she connected with um you know leaders within the medical space she went and she connected with NPOs and NGOs, and she started really letting them in on what she was doing um, and what her activities were. So what this means is that you also, you know, as a, a as a woman in business, as a business leader, have this opportunity to start shaping and crafting, uh, you know, your, your your messaging and your position within LinkedIn by connecting to people, you know, who are like minded, by connecting to people who you feel will, you know, add some value to your business as well so really you know tell people how you're supporting the community show people how you're giving back let people in on what your journey looks like you know and how you need their help and how you can help them as well so with with um with dr ola's project she was able to gain about half a million followers on linkedin and she further then goes on to say we've been able to influence healthcare reform in Nigeria through LinkedIn's community. LinkedIn's community helped us achieve that kind of influence. So again, it just shows that, you know, you have this opportunity, you have this platform to use. And the question is, how can you use it for yourself as a professional? And how can you start to position yourself as a woman in business? With that being said, that's the, the section around building a really strong profile. And I'm sure there are quite a few um, questions that have come up. Are there any that I can take uh, now, John Foster? Um, yes, uh, there's quite a few questions coming through. I think uh, Foster and I are trying to tell everybody to maybe put them into the Q&A rather so that we can manage them better uh, if any, everybody can maybe put them into the Q&A rather than the chat section. But um, uh, Foster, do you want to handle the questions, uh, the, the ones that we see in the Q&A, Salam? Yes. Um, Ophelia, Ophelia Emisa is, is asking, should your job or what you are into influence your profile picture on LinkedIn? I beg your pardon, please uh, read that again for me, Foster. Your job. Or your influ or what you are into, influence your profile picture on LinkedIn. Um, yeah. So I mean, it it can definitely influence your profile picture, but it doesn't have to. So it's up to you as to how you want to be seen as a professional. Do you want to put a picture that will represent what you're doing right now at the moment? Or do you want to put a picture that represents uh, the industry at large that you work for? So I think those are the two um, defining questions that should answer your question, um, Ophelia. Okay. Uh, famous is asking, how do you build, how do you start building capacity as a student currently on LinkedIn? How do you start building capacity? So I think it's, it's such a cliche answer but the answer is just start <laughs> um, and what I mean by that is start with you know reading up on content that you feel will help you uh, you know shape your you as an expert or as a student within the particular field that you want to grow yourself in and you'll really start to get you know nuggets of inspiration from articles that you read and then as a result start off with just one article per month. Um, and as you start to grow yourself and as you start to see the engagement and the interactivity that you're getting, you can obviously then see what your audience prefers, what your connections prefer. And from there on, you'll either, you know, start putting up short form posts. And if you don't have enough capacity, all you need to do is go find an article and go share that article and add your own voice or your own opinion to it. It can literally just be a one-liner or a two-liner, but what matters is that you've gone and you have been active and you've engaged with a topic that you know uh, is close to your heart. 
uh, Ophelia is uh, also asking, please, what, please, with your skills, is it advisable to add soft skills? Um, I, I would say what it's advisable to add skills that will help you um, that will help you attract people or connect with people that you want. So again, it's you know how do you want to be seen? If you feel like a soft skill is something that will help you um, get connected with a particular business leader, then absolutely put it there. But if you feel like it may you know um, um, hinder the chances of you connecting to the right professionals or the right people, then perhaps not. So again, it, it's all around, you know, I think the main question that you want to ask yourself when building a strong prof profile is how do you want to be seen by other professionals and how do you want to position yourself um, as either a thought leader or an expert within your field? And once you've answered that question, then, then, then that can almost, you know, filter into your other questions as to whether you want to add in hard or soft skills. Hoping that answers your question, Ophelia. Okay, Ayanda, the, um, another question from uh, Sana. Um, if you are if an university student without a professional job yet, how well do you use LinkedIn, especially writing your profile? So you still use it as a professional because, I mean, at the end of the day, you're aspiring to get somewhere. So I would say go and start following companies that you would potentially potentially like to perhaps work for. Um, go and start following, uh, you know, companies within that industry that you have interest in. Also, start connecting with people who you feel, you know, can give you an opportunity to take that first step into the industry or take that first uh, journey within uh, your professional story that you want to write. So it's just definitely about being present and also about the connecting to the people and connecting to the pages that will help you take you to the next level. Again, also following those influences that will really just help you with the insights and the knowledge that you need to equip yourself as a professional so that when you do eventually graduate or when you do eventually um you know step into the working world you are ready for it and you've already you know kind of built your base and your foundation as a professional okay um a question from any daso guatin um as a recent graduate with no work experience is it okay to put your internship experience there Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, remember, you are still just a graduate, you are still at entry level or training level. So whatever experience you have right now that will help you, um, you know, take you to the next step, absolutely, 100%, uh, I would say, put down your internship uh, experience. Because remember, that shapes your, your, your digital CV, but it also shapes your, your career path and journey. Okay, um, another question. What are some of the practical tips to stay strong as a professional on LinkedIn from Irene? What are the some of the what, sorry? Practical tips to stay strong as a professional on LinkedIn. So the practical tips, I'll actually touch on those a little bit later as well. And I love how you guys are asking things that I'll be touching on. But, you know, the practical tips is, you know, stay present um, engage as much as possible, check your profile, check, go onto the platform as often as you can um, and see, you know, what people are saying also engaging, engaging in articles, uh, joining groups or member groups that you feel will really add value to you and where you can also add your own professional opinion and voice to as well. So I think the best, the best way to say this is stay present as much as possible and stay as engaged as much as possible by interacting with um, you know, various uh, peers and business leaders as well. Okay, um, which step a new comp which are the step a new company can take to get visibility on LinkedIn? Okay, so the first step that you want to do is make sure, making sure that you, you create a LinkedIn company page. Um, and you'll see there when you create a LinkedIn company page, you get the opportunity or LinkedIn um, probes you to start building the company profile. So exactly like how you would build your own personal profile, you would do the same with the company page as well. So within that, you would now go and you would insert all of the information about your business, what it does, what service 
services it offers, how it helps people. You can link them, you can add a link that can take them to your website where they can get more information. You tell us where your business is located. Um, what then can happen is that your employees of the business can connect to that business as well so that we can see who works for that business, who is within that business. You can start to add, you know, content pieces that drive conversations within that industry or that particular vertical that you're working for. There's, so there's so many different ways in which you can start building a nice, strong company page that tells people who you are as a business, as a company. And then what you can start doing is that you can start using your employees as well as your executive leadership to be advocates and to be voices for your company to drive that conversation and that message across as well. Okay, so a question from Tamala and Regina. Tamala is asking, how does one stay strong and present without overly posting on your LinkedIn profile? And Regina is also asking, how, well, how what is the length of the videos that you can, the, of videos you can post on LinkedIn? Is there any particular length to the videos that you can post on LinkedIn? Okay, so um, just on the first question, I don't think you can, uh, it can, it, you can ever get to a point where you overly post. Um, as, as long as your, your content is relative, um, as, as long as it, it, it obviously um, speaks to your audience or speaks to your members, then it definitely, you know, has a place within the platform. But what I would advise, we, we would say, you know, keep it at least at about, but this is more so for brands. So if you're a brand, we'd say at minimum, try to have, you know, two to three posts on a weekly basis. But as an individual, remember, you it's a little bit different from being a brand. So you want to, you'll be engaging with other posts, you'll be following and, you know, liking and sharing other pieces of content that you're reading as well. So for me, in my personal experience and opinion, uh, as a professional and as an individual on the platform, you can never do to something that you can never be overly active on the platform. If anything, we urge you to be more active. And then the second, the, sorry, then the second point around video, again, if it's relative and it's to the point, I mean, we sometimes see videos that are up to 20 minutes long um, that do really well. But at the moment, LinkedIn has um, put down a maximum of 10 minutes uh, for a video to, to be loaded. So yeah, up to 10 minutes would be the best practice for me. Okay, so um, someone too is asking, I think it's more of the premium account. He said, can mobile money be used to pay to increase your membership? Um, yeah, so that that's definitely around the premium account. So you would have to, um, you, they, they, there's a link and I'll also look if I can share that with you. So there's different kind of uh, payment options, uh, depending on what it is that you want to unlock or what functionalities that you prefer to unlock. So like I said, you can either have LinkedIn learning, you can have something that's called a sales navigator on the platform as well. The more you want, obviously, the little bit more expensive that it'll be as well. But it's certainly is um, a LinkedIn premium account that you would have to pay for. Okay, John, um, I think some people want to ask the question themselves. I've, I've been getting PMs and uh, messages. I, I don't know if we should also give them the opportunity to ask the questions themselves. Okay, Foster, may I perhaps maybe suggest that we, we, we continue a bit and then leave the, the ones who want to ask the questions themselves for the end? Is that okay? Yes, yes, sure. Okay, so maybe we'll take because, uh, type of questions now, and then at the end we'll take the ones where people want to ask themselves. Also, if we have some time, Ayanda, and I know you you have a busy day ahead, so um, if we have a bit of time, maybe you can just at the end share a just quick practical example of maybe your profile because it is in great form, just to show people sure. what you mean, um, just as a practical example on the oh, site, okay. etc. Okay, okay. Sure. Happy, happy to do that. Um, so I'll, I'll go into the next uh, part, but please, guys, feel free to continue asking those questions. I'm loving the, the engagement. It's really great. And obviously, at the end, we will, we will address more of those. 
Um, so just, you know, look, I thought this is quite important to bring across, but just looking at, you know, the past couple of months with COVID-19 just being a global, um, you know, pandemic, we've, we've seen a little bit of a change in behavior from our members and from our audience. And I think, you know, a lot of that lies around, you know, not really having a, a strong confidence in brands or in people. Um, and, you know, we want to try and start changing that narrative. And we, we've actually seen in, in the last month how that has really changed so incredibly well through using people and using the face of a brand to position, um, to position themselves on behalf of the actual company or on behalf of the actual business. What that means is that people actually still trust people in 2020. So it goes back to the, you know, good old marketing 101 where, you know, people believe people. And if you go and you use your face to, you know, speak about a particular topic to represent your business, to represent your company, um, it really will definitely be a lot more meaningful and a lot more relative because at the end of the day, we need to remember that the professionals that we are talking to are also still human. And obviously, you know, bringing that human element, we find, you know, works incredibly well. And as you can see here in the barometer, it starts on a high where people trust people in local communities. They're trusting um, scientists as well as citizens of countries. So what this really means is, you know, again, I challenge you and I urge you to start being the face uh, of your business, start being the face of your of your brand that you, you're working with. And if you're potentially not yet working or would like to work within a particular industry, within a particular field, go and start, you know, putting up opinion pieces uh, around topics that, you know, uh, are in the current affairs at the moment, around topics that matter to you as well. And then also, you know, this is a, this is a lovely quote that we always, put, I always love to put up, and it says, authenticity is a collection of choices that we have to make every day. It's about the choice to show up and be real, the choice to be honest, and the choice to let our true selves be seen. And therefore, what that means is that, you know, it's really about influence, influence rather, and not influences. So how are you, as a woman in business, as a business leader, you know, positioning yourself and using your own voice to represent a majority, a minority, or to represent a particular industry that you feel very passionate about. And the call to action here, and this is where we want to start really, you know, driving the woman narrative uh, and really driving that topic is there is definitely opportunity for us. So, you know, I think all of us are very much privy to this knowledge and we all know the, the challenges that us as women face within our workspaces, um, within the Land, the, the media landscape or the industry that you work within. And, you know, we have a few examples here that, you know, state that across all formats, women appear as subjects in the news only 24% of the time. Um, another one says high profile women are routinely trolled on, on online. Um, you know, I won't read all of them, but one more says 18% of female news subjects are portrayed as victims in the comparison, in comparison to 8% of the, uh, of the male subjects. So what we see is that, you know, like, you know, offline, also online, if we go and we search for a particular uh, industry, or if I go to a search engine and I look for, um, you know, mining and metals, we still see, you know, a strong voice of men being shown or a strong image of men being shown. And my challenge again to you is how do we go and change that narrative to make sure that women are at the forefront? So that, you know, obviously lies heavily on you and me. So we need to go and start writing about, you know, these topics within our industries, whether it is male dominated or not, but, you know, really just to see more of, you know, women leaders, to see more women, uh, women in business, to see more of the voice of a woman coming out and coming up on the platform and across, you know, digital platforms, um, uh, digital channels rather as well. So it gives you this opportunity 
start really putting your voice forward by writing articles, by being present, by engaging um, and really connecting with people so that if somebody thinks about a particular topic, um, the, the voice and face of a woman comes first and top of mind um, before our male counterparts. Um, and how you do that is that obviously, you know, digital offers a chance to be heard and seen by new audiences outside your existing circle. So if you remember what I said earlier on is that on average, we have about 100 connections, you know, individually. So if you start to curate content and you start to engage and you start to be more active and involved um, within different conversations on the platform, that gives, uh, you know, you this opportunity to have your content content shared, to have your voices, your voice extended, um, you know, not only to your own, own audience, but to your audience's connections as well. Uh, and which is why it's a key place where brands and people also go to search for new talent. So, you know, I, I heard a few that there were a few graduates on the call right now. So if you want to be seen, if you want to be noticed by, you know, potential recruiters who are looking for people like you, what you want to do is you want to start being active. You want to really engage, um, you know, take up some time to write, uh, you know, short pieces of content, long pieces of content, you know, it's really about crafting that professional uh, story and that professional identity, identity that well represents you. And then also audiences are increasingly demanding fairer representation um, and we all need to see role models we can aspire to. And this speaks back to following experts, following thought leaders and following influences. Um, it's either you go and follow those people, but also you don't know who is following you and you don't know who's aspiring to be like you as well. So the more present you are, the more active you are, um, you know, whatever topics you're writing about or engaging in, remember that there is somebody who's looking uh, to you and as a result, you're also looking to somebody else. So it's this, you know, uh, kind of circular ecosystem that goes round and round. And which is why many organizations, particularly in the media, have now begun to be more proactive in sourcing new female talent. So ladies, the opportunity is there. Um, you know, people are looking out for us. They want to hear from us as women. We have this platform to really start to empower ourselves. We have this platform to start to change the narrative. And we have this platform to really inspire not us, only ourselves, but people who also look up to us as well. So the practical tips in which you're able to do this, and I think there was a question around this um, earlier on, start to use digital to support your goals. And how you do that is, again, I'll reiterate and say, build your network. How to build your network? Follow companies that you feel will help you in shaping your professional uh, 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 story or your professional pathway or journey. Go and connect with, you know, businesses that you feel will, you know, really define who you are as a professional. Go and connect with individuals, with peers, with colleagues, with current customers, with current clients as well. Um, and what that gives you the opportunity to do is it goes and it unlocks, you, you know, uh, the ability, the ability rather, sorry, to book more meetings, to go and network with people. You know, obviously we're in this COVID-19 situation where we aren't able to attend uh, events or conferences physically. So that takes away from networking. However, you know, we're now in this virtual space where the networking happens on a platform such as LinkedIn. So if you want to network, go and build your net, go and build your professional network on the platform and start connecting and engaging and interacting with those uh, professionals and individuals. Also share your ideas and information. You know, uh, you don't know who is watching, you don't know who is looking out for you. So you, you want to continually put yourself out there and don't shy away. Also, again, having interesting conversations, with, which speaks back to that engagement element, and then creating new content. So, you know, go and think about maybe perhaps go after uh, what I challenge you to do after this session is take some time to think about what you are a champion at and what you really um, feel you're passionate about. So if you were, you know, to be asked, what are you, uh, what are you an actual pioneer at? Whatever that answer is, 
should then you know be the answer to what your content will be about because from there you'll start to build different themes perhaps for the next quarter which is you know the next three months or so where you can look at topics and articles that you can start writing about which will feed into your network and people can start engaging in and then obviously choose your channel so based on what your objective is and what you're trying to achieve, um, you know what channel speaks to, to each of those objectives. Of course, we've spoken about LinkedIn and that's why I'm here. LinkedIn is really much more about, you know, creating and maintaining a professional identity. It's about connecting with like-minded individuals. It's about following those companies and those businesses um, that will help you within your career. Um, and also, you know, really getting the support that you need and being able to network and now especially in this virtual space that we're in and then of course you have these other channels that can also definitely um, you know filter in and contribute to your bigger picture and your objective as well so I mean when we think about talking points and if you think about how you want to you know start engaging again think about what your end goal is and what your objective is so if for example you're looking to just really network and share ideas and have interesting conversations then what you really want to do a lot is to share content is to engage or comment in people's um, feeds or articles or posts uh, etc uh, however if you if you're actually looking to to become a thought leader, um, you will need to commit a little bit more time, uh, which means, you know, committing to a regular schedule of publishing new content. So that would be through your long form post of writing an article, perhaps once a month. If you have capacity, you could even look at doing it twice a month, but really maybe just, you know, coming up with a nice content calendar or content plan for the next month or two months, which can then speak back to you know, what you'll talk about, you know, it will inform your strategy, um, et cetera, et cetera. So think about what your goal is and what you want to achieve on the platform as a professional. And then that will better help you kind of, you know, starting. Like I said, all you need to do is start, but also all you need to do is ask yourself, what do you want to achieve and what is your goal? And remember, there isn't really, uh, you know, a place where this ends, you know, it's a, it's a continuous effort and you really just need to keep putting in that, um, that oil into the machine to keep it going. So some best practices for writing thought leadership. Um, if you're perhaps stuck and you're not sure where to start, the best place to start is by looking at these um, six different uh, elements. So the first one is to analyze the markets, um, to find opportunities for your brand, to own and lead the conversation. So I'm sure this one is very easy for all of us. We know what uh, where our expertise lie in. We know what industries we work for. So it's really just around looking for those really good topics that you know will help you add value to your audience or to your connections. And then most importantly, you want to make sure that you are as relevant as possible. And like I said, LinkedIn, you know, has all of this insights and data to share with you. So go ahead and analyze topics and trends that, you know, are relevant to your customers, to your peers, and to your connections and write stories or, or, or articles that inform those type of um, topics as well. And then thirdly, you obviously should have a vision. So lay out a clear vision for either yourself or your company's future and use it to inform your thought leadership topics. And then number four is, you know, the trust element. I cannot emphasize this more than enough. So, I mean, earlier on, I spoke about how LinkedIn is this trusted platform, but also again, you know, it's a trusted platform because of the members that we have and the quality of, you know, pieces, articles, and information that they put up onto the platform. So you want to make sure that if somebody thinks about a particular topic, so for example, if you go and you think, oh, wow, I wonder what's happening uh, in the digital uh, business to business space at the moment you know top of mind perhaps would come someone like Ayanda because you know you know that she talks about this she continually writes articles she continually shares content that will help you to better understand the digital b2b um, markets and industry at the moment and then number five is you know you want to be con concise so it says here 
think smart but small so you know obviously we 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 do live in africa and for those of you that aren't in africa we we obviously struggle with data sometimes <laughs> so you want to also just make sure that your your content is very concise and to the point but also people don't have that much attention span you know so you want to make sure that you're answering the who the what why and when very quickly in your article and then obviously in the rest of your article and the rest of your content people will read as long as it is again number two relevant um and then lastly you want to go and measure your progress so my challenge to you is if you have been active or not so active on LinkedIn, perhaps go and look in the, at the insights um, that are on your post at the moment. See, you know, how many people are engaging, if any. See how many likes you get, how many shares you get. But the moment you start becoming more intentional about the pieces that you put out, about the, the articles that you write, you'll see in the next couple of months to come that your, if, your efforts will definitely pay off. And you'll see within, you know, the insights and the data that you get that you're able to measure between today the 9th of may when ayanda gave you this talk and then six months from now if you were in fact you know active and you took the learnings from the session there definitely will be some kind of a difference and like i said you know there there, there is no final point it's continually just you know improv improving yourself as an individual and as a professional um, to really have people see you as an expert within a particular field and then I also know that time is obviously very sensitive to a lot of people, you know, we are, you know, we are talking to some business leaders here. We have students probably who have a lot of assignments, you know. Sometimes you just don't have, you know, the, 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 the capacity to be able to sit back and write all of this or be as active. But like I said earlier on, it's as easy as literally just going to read an article share that article and add your voice to it by either, you know, putting down a one-liner uh, of what your opinion may be or, you know, a quick short paragraph. So you don't have to go and reinvent the wheel. You can literally go and repurpose what is already there. There's heaps and heaps of content that sits on LinkedIn. Um, like I said, we have about 109 billion pieces of content that are being served. And of those within your industry, you can go and find something uh, which you can then read and quickly go and share without having to go and rewrite an entire article if you feel um, you're not confident enough yet or if you feel you don't have the capacity or time. Um, and then, you know, lastly, what you want to do is, you know, how do people see you when they go onto the online space? So if I go into a search engine and I go and I, sh and I look for part uh, and you go and look for Ayanda Mbata, for example, um, you know, I want to make sure that I've removed all of my old social media profile, that everything that is up is indeed who I am, and it, it definitely is me. Um, you also want to make sure that your privacy settings are on for all of your social media platforms. So go in and check, for example, uh, on LinkedIn, if you want to be private and you don't want to be seen by people, if you go view their profiles, you can go and do that, but that means that you, um, uh, in turn, you also won't be able to see who comes and checks your profile as well. But there's a lot of, uh, a lot of security um, elements that you are able to go and make secure within your set settings to make sure that your profile um, isn't tampered with, but also that it belongs solely to you and you're able to use it the way in which you prefer as well. And also, if you're seeing content that you're unhappy with, you'll probably need to go and create new content to push it off the first page or you can go and delete that content as well. And then lastly, just go and polish up the profiles for anything you'll use um, professionally, because again, you know, you want to make sure that if people see your face and they, you know, see a particular tagline or summaries, it is indeed you and it is indeed the way that you want to be seen as well by other people or by the public at large. And then finally, um, thought leadership obviously is about trust and with trust comes influence. So my question to you today or my challenge to you today is how do you want to, you know, shape your, how do you want to change things within your industry? How do you want to use your own voice to position yourself as a thought leader as well as an expert? It starts with you and you literally have to just start. I know people are so scared of, you know, putting themselves out there 
But again, that's where the opportunity is. The more active you are, the more influential you are, the more attractive you will be and people will start to see more of you and have you as top of mind when it comes to a particular topic or a subject matter within uh, a specific industry. Uh, and with that being said, um, that was the masterclass for today. Are there any more questions that I'm able to answer? Yes, I, I think, Ayanda, um, there are two people that have raised their hands, so I'm going to give them the opportunity for them to ask their questions. Is that okay? Okay. Hello, are they are they are the people there? Okay, so just a minute. Okay, no problem. Uh, Baba Mohammed and uh, Michelle. Yes, please. Yes. I wanted to ask. Sometimes I see the thing about the premium account on LinkedIn and I'm wondering what is the advantages? Why should I opt for the premium? What are some of the benefits of being on the premium? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for that question. So um, with the premium account, what you're able to get is you, you, you unlock a few more functionalities that an ordinary uh, profile wouldn't have. So what that means is LinkedIn starts to share data uh, with you around, you know, your peers, around people who you connected with. But also what you can do is now it also unlocks all of this Oh, sorry, there's some uh, feedback I'm getting there. But what you what it also unlocks for you is things such as sales navigator. So if, for example, maybe you're in the business development field and you want to start chasing specific leads, um, you're able to do that through your LinkedIn premium account. You can also then go and take up LinkedIn learning. So obviously LinkedIn has went and opened up a, a few online courses, but there are a lot more that you can go and take up. However, those are locked and you would have to have a LinkedIn premium account to be able to 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 take those to take those other courses so it certainly is just about unlocking other functionalities within the platform that you you don't have access to at the moment as a normal uh, as a normal profile um any that's all what thing please you can ask your question okay. Um, what, what I want to ask is that if you have a couple of businesses, let's say um, you are into hairdressing and then maybe you work for another media house, is it okay to combine all these businesses on one LinkedIn page or you have to open different LinkedIn pages for all of your separate businesses? Okay, yeah, also a very good question. So um, you I definitely say you have to open different LinkedIn pages um, for all of the different businesses. So the first thing is, obviously, if your business is, is um, all of the different businesses aren't all sitting under one umbrella, then they certainly need their own space. However, if it is a business that has sub sub brands within it, then you can have a, a one holistic company page. And within that company page, you can have what we call affiliated pages. So those affiliated pages would be linked back to your mother brand. But if, for example, the one business is about hairdressing and the other one is in media and then the other one is in mining, then they definitely all um, have to have their own company page because you will definitely confuse your audience. Um, remember, you know, you have an audience that follows you and you need to make sure that you're speaking specifically to the needs of your audience, but also to the services that that particular company or business offers. So if you go and you start having different uh, conversations about your hair and then about about mining and metals and then about media, it's going to be very schizophrenic and probably push people away. So definitely create different pages for those different businesses. Happy to answer the next question. The next question, please. Okay, so can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, so I'm asking, 
I'm on my LinkedIn page, most of the work I've done, I'm, I graduated last year and I'm still doing my national service in Ghana. And mostly what, what I did last year or before completing was mostly voluntary. So on my LinkedIn, my previous work experience, should I state it's a voluntary work or I should just state that I'm have worked in this place? I don't know if you get me. Yes, I do get you. So um, I, would, I would probably say put it under your voluntary work. However, if the voluntary work um, is going to help you in terms of like, in terms of getting into your new job or into the industry that you're working with, and if it was a, a, an internship, then you can certainly put it under your work experience as well. So you just need to just... Um, let us know or rather let yourself know ask yourself does this filter into my work experience or is it just only volunteer but to answer your question it sounds like something that should sit under voluntary work and not work experience and what you can do is that the skills that you would have gained from that you then go and you add it onto your skills um, that I mentioned about earlier on Okay, so Ayanda, um, I've been getting this question. I think people have been approaching me about this problem. They are new users of LinkedIn. They signed up their account and um, they tell them to verify with um, what do you call it, either their email or something. They try a couple number of times and it's, it blocked them. So they are not able to use LinkedIn. Uh, one is asking if there is anything they can do about it. Oh boy. Okay. Yeah. That, that is very odd because uh, I know that LinkedIn does have a two-step verification. However, if you have perhaps, um, if you do receive that email, it should be easy for you to click on that link, uh, which, would, which should activate your profile. If that's not happening, what I'll ask for you to do is uh, pr probably go to LinkedIn support. Um, they do have it on the website. They have it on the platform as well and log a ticket with them and they're usually very good at um, responding to those type of queries and they should be able to help you uh, with regards to why you aren't able to actively or rather to activate your profile when it's new. I'm not too sure why that's happening but it must be some kind of a, a glitch at that given time. Okay. Um, to the Q&A um, from the person didn't state his name, but uh, so I, the question is, so I get that one should create just one account, but I would like to know if it is possible to post content on different things, say health, fashion, farming on one platform. Will it look, will it look all over the place? Um, yeah, so, so obviously if you, if as an individual, it, it does work a little bit differently to the company page. So this speaks back to what I was saying now. Now, if you are a company and you have different, like the, and you, all of your different companies speak to, you know, different verticals or industries, then certainly you want to have different pages. However, if you're an individual, then um, I don't see why it should be an issue if you talk about different topics, because obviously then people will see that you are a, a hybrid and you 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 are kind of a thought leader within different spaces but with that being said i still would say you have to have you know one defining topic or one defining industry that you feel you really you know stand out with and you're really passionate about there's nothing wrong with going to comment about hair care um and perhaps you know medical uh medical articles every now and again however i still need to know what you represent and what industry you represent as an expert or as a professional. So find that, like I said, what are you an expert at? If you were to ask yourself, what's the one thing that you are a true pioneer and a champion at, that should be your main topic that you really engage in and talk about a lot. And then you can absolutely still go every now and again and, you know, talk, talk around other topics too, if you feel they are close to your heart. So uh, Pimina is asking, without the premium account, I can't chat anyone. You can't chat anyone, meaning you can't send an email to anyone. Is that what she's asking? I'm not sure. I, I think so. Yeah, so so it, it, obviously it is quite, it, dep it depends on the people's 
um, privacy settings that they've put up on their own personal profile. So some people will open it up to getting and receiving uh, messages from anyone. However, a lot of our members obviously uh, are, you know, have put their safeguards up. So they will uh, tell LinkedIn that it can't send messages from people who they do not know, or do not recognize. So yeah, you will find that sometimes if you're not connected to someone, you can't send them an email. There is a small uh, minority of people who you can do that to, but majority I know have locked that setting on their, on their profile. Mm. Ophelia is asking if there's a professional way of applying for a job on LinkedIn. Um, no, so there isn't really like a, a guide or a, a best practice, but if you have found or seen a job that you have interest in, obviously you will go and click on there and it will, it will probe you with all of the right steps to take to go apply for that job. Sometimes it will, you know, let you click outside of the site where it will take you to the website of the particular company or um, sometimes you can apply within the platform itself. Every business does it differently, but there isn't, you know, a specific guide or best practice as to go and apply for a job. It's literally, if you feel, um, you know, that you are best suited for a particular role or job that's been put up on LinkedIn, just go select and uh, see what the instructions are from the business or from the recruiter. Okay, Spendy Love is asking, most of the times I only see job opportunities some months after they have been posted. Is there anything wrong I'm doing? No, there's definitely nothing wrong that you're doing. Uh, we, a lot of people see that and come across that. Sometimes um, some companies, unfortunately, don't put down the job once it has been uh, filled. So unfortunately, that's just one of the things that LinkedIn doesn't really have much power on. Uh, it's really dependent on the company. And I, I think recruiters do forget to take the job down once it's been filled. So sorry about that. It is, it is a company fault and not so much a LinkedIn fault. Okay, um, Deborah is asking, how do you get someone to endorse your skills? Um, so LinkedIn usually goes and 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 um and asks your peers to endorse you on something, but also there is a tab where you should be able to 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 go and ask somebody to go and endorse you for specific skills. But most of the time, LinkedIn will go, for example, and and ask you, um, is John great at business leadership and then I will go and endorse John on that. So again, it's the connections, you know, connect with people and LinkedIn will start helping you. The algorithm um, works wonders when it comes to that. Immaculate wants to ask the question so um, okay. she can ask. Hello? Please, can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Thank you for an insightful session. I really enjoyed your presentation. So oh, it's such a pleasure. Going, okay. so since I'm going to be new on LinkedIn and I already have um, works that I've done and articles that I've written and posts that I've done, but I do them on Facebook and stuff. Is it would you advise that I copy the, those previous um work on LinkedIn or when I have a fresh start um agenda and engagement with people, that's when I have to post on LinkedIn or I can post my previous um activities that I have done. You can definitely yeah, so you you definitely can go and post your previous um, work that you've done or posts that you've put up on other platforms. If you feel that they represent you well as a professional, if you feel that they uh, put you in a good position uh, as well, then absolutely go and do it. Like I said earlier on, you don't have to go reinvent something that is already there. So you can certainly go and take that and repurpose it and put it onto the LinkedIn platform. If anything, I'd definitely say use what you already have have if you've done some great stuff in the past already absolutely thumbs up go and put it up on linkedin okay thank you very much pleasure um, Pfizer is asking how do you rebrand your profile when you have changed 
if you are when you have changed in career path Ooh, interesting one so the the best way in which you can rebrand that is taking off what you you feel is no longer relevant for your career path um but also starting to actively um engage and starting to actively put up posts that are more in line with where your new career path is now so i think it was in my second last slide where it said if you want to hide specific posts if you want people to no longer see who you used to be or what you used to do put up more things that are relevant to the now that that then that what that will do is it will push away all of the old stuff or you can simply go and uh, delete it and restart your own profile your, prof your profile again so that it speaks to who you are now um, as a professional. If you feel like, you know, some of the stuff that you've done in the past is still slightly relevant, then leave it there. But it's obviously your, up, up to your own prerogative to go ahead and decide what you feel, um, you know, speaks to your new brand or to your new professional journey and what no longer feeds into that. If you feel that it no longer feeds into it, then chuck it away. Here we go. Please, you can ask your question now. And I have one question about premium account. Is that do I need to go premium before I can post articles and other materials? No. So you can, you can, anybody can go and uh, and post an article. You do not have to have a premium account. Um, if you just have a normal account, uh, you can go and see there on your profile. LinkedIn gives you the option to either put up a short form post or it will also give you the opportunity to go and write an article. So the answer is no, you do not need a premium account to start writing articles. Christabel is asking, does one has to pay for a charity page? Do one have to pay for a charity page? Um, I'm not too sure if I understand that question very well, but if, if um, she's asking, does she have to pay for a company page? The answer is no. Um, if I'm not answering it correctly, then please do elaborate. But yeah, if you want to create a new page on LinkedIn, it's at no cost, it's free of charge, and LinkedIn will give you all of the step-by-steps to, as to how to do it. I think most of the question, the rest of the question is about um, premium accounts and um, pay, payment okay. as well as, yeah. So. Amazing. Thank you so much to everybody um, just for the opportunity and for your time. I do hope that this was insightful um, and I hope that it was indeed what you were looking to get. And please do come, uh, go onto my page. I'm actually going to go show you my page now. And you are absolutely welcome to connect with me and we can have these conversations that I was talking about just now. And okay. yeah, we can get the conversation. I think I'm just uh, Ayanda, to me. Yes. Ayanda, I think that you should ask five questions to the audience so that they can win their premium membership. Um, uh, I can help you with that if you can't think of all five. Um, but I think, please think of the first one for me, John. Uh, I think, just quickly go into my account. I think that everybody should be able to ask the questions, give their feedback on what tips they think uh, will help them have a better professional profile on LinkedIn. Um, and we can put the hand up and answer the question to see if they're right. And then, Foster, you can manage the winners. Yo. I think that sounds like a good idea. So is anybody going to put their hand up and ask? I mean, an answer. Maybe nobody wants a, a, a I have premium a, account. Uh, Michaeleen, is it Michaeleen or something? She has her hands up. So if there is any other question, you can direct it to her and see. I'll just, I'll just repeat the question while we get the hand up. The question is, can anybody name some of the tips to make yourself have a better profile on LinkedIn? That's the question. The tips that Ayanda gave us today. Um, hello. Hello. The question again. <laughs> hello. Yeah, the, the question, question. again. 
So the question is, give us one of the tips that will help you have a very strong and great profile. I shared six of them with you just now. Uh, if you can give us at least one. Um, hi, can I have a good picture? Have Hello. a good one. Hello. Yes. Okay. I think I think I heard somebody said have a good picture. I am. Um, yeah. Hello. 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 I am. Hello. Okay. I'm not sure if this is actually going to work because I, I'm I hearing see. people speak over each other. Maybe perhaps, um, Foster, we can look at the questions of uh, the people who interacted during the session and we can um, select our top five from there. What do you think? I think so. Uh, the question, I think three questions will do. The rest, the two, we can just choose for the person who was most engaged. Yeah, so I think, yeah, well, let's give it to the most engaging person. And the, I know somebody just answered the question that, um, that John posed right now. I, I, I didn't hear the person. Uh. Yeah, also wasn't too clear. There's a lot of um, background noise and um, feedback that's happening. So I'm struggling to hear the answers. Okay, so... Can we ask another question or something that we we, we ask from there? Okay, so um, I talked about you know using digital to support your goals. Um, what's the one thing that you can help uh, yourself to do? What's the one one of the things? So I talked about five different things, um, and how can you do that? How can you use digital to help support your goals? Just one. Okay, I think I think um, I think to, to sort this out, I've actually had a look at the chat room, and there are some questions coming out here. So uh, I think uh, that's a quick one because I think Gifty was very quick on, this and she said have a great profile. That is good, but I don't think it's detailed enough in its answer. Uh, we're looking for actual specifics. So uh, I think the first one that stands out here is from Deborah. It says add skills to get endorsed. So I think Ayanda, are you happy with that as a winner? Definitely. Yeah, that's a good one. Deborah, I'm happy with that. So uh, Deborah is a winner. Um, we've got Mavis saying your professional summary. Thank you. Yes. Summary. So we're gonna give Mavis one also. Uh, we're gonna uh, Look at another one. Regina has got five or six tips. Uh, we can give wow. her. She said uh, a good profile picture, compelling summary, detailed work experience, add examples of works so you've had, add skills and get recommendations. So, Regina. Ooh, Regina, <laughs> what a champion. She's <laughs> in there. Are we giving it to Regina? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Michelle has said be present and engaged, so I think that's good. And one more last one, I think for, um, is it Anadasa, who says put in location, education, publication, and accomplishments. Wow, nice one, true. That's a really great one. Yeah. So uh, what I have here, we have Deborah, Mavis, Regina, Michelle, and Anadasa. And a dose. I'm sorry if I've mispronounced it. So those are our five premium account winners. Um, if I may ask you to please share your LinkedIn profile link with uh, Foster, and then Foster will share that with us, and we will we will reward you with that um, in the next coming few weeks, in the next week or so. Can you please go over the name again? Uh, Regina, Deborah. So it's Deborah. Mavis, Regina, Michelle, and Anna Dosa. I think um, if, if, if there is anything you can do, any Daso was very was very engaging on the platform, asking questions here and there. 
So if there if there is anything that so I do I do have any dose. I think I've just maybe mispronounced it. There isn't any dosa here. Uh, yes, any that's what I Yes, yeah. So okay. so those are our five. If you Foster can just share the LinkedIn profile links with myself and John, and we'll take care of the rest. Okay. And then just, uh, just a, one more thing that I wanted to show. Oh, I'm not able to share my screen anymore somehow. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I think we're done. Foster? Foster, hello. I wanted to just quickly show them my profile. Yeah, I'm, here. Really I'm, here. I'm here. that. I'm so working on that. Sure so they can go and connect with me and. Oh, okay. So, I think you can you can share now. Oh yes, I can. Thank you. Um, are you guys able to see my my page here? Nope. No. Oh, wait. Sorry, I forgot to press share. There we go. Um, well, we can see it now. So this is basically what I'm sure all of you guys can see, have seen it before. And this is what it looks like on desktop. This is my page. And this is the news feed basically where you see all of the content pieces. So I am connected to, you know, all of these guys and I'm following all of these pages as well. But what you'll see here on the left hand side as well, are all of the hashtags that I've decided to start following. So what I didn't talk about um, in, in the session is that you can go and start following specific hashtags as well to, to, to re so that the, you, know, you see those things come up in your newsfeed. So for example, um, I've gone and I've followed marketing, I've followed branding, I've followed LinkedIn and uh, advertising and marketing. So these are all of the things that a person is as a professional. Um, so whenever someone, of, sorry, mute yourselves. Uh, I'm getting some feedback. Not sure who that's from. Um, yeah, so what I was saying is that, you know, with all of with the, with the hashtags that I've decided to follow, those will come on my newsfeed along with the people I'm connected with, along with the people, uh, with the companies that I've decided to follow as well. And you'll see some of them have gone and shared articles. So this is a good example of what I was saying. So this lady here who's a CMO of Deloitte, what she's done is she went and she read this article and she literally just went and shared the article and added her own voice and her own opinion here. And that's literally all you need to do. You don't have to go and rewrite an entire article. You certainly can do so. But look at what she's done here. She's gone and she's added some hashtags where people can go and find her. So her, her, her piece. So if you are following, you know, uh, the woman hashtag or woman in leadership hashtag, her post will definitely come up on your newsfeed as well, even though you're not connected to her. And then, um, you know, these are some of the, you know, some of my clients and the people that I, the companies that I follow as well. So their work will also come up on my newsfeed. And then if we go onto my profile, you'll see here exactly what I was talking about. So here's the blue space that I mentioned earlier on that you, you, I definitely have to go and change after the session. I'll be very sad to see anyone's profile that looks blue, that has a blue background image. So go and put in whatever you feel represents you as a professional, or if you feel you want to represent the business that you work for, go ahead and put that there. And then, you know, you'll see there that, you know, I've put in a nice little tagline there, so the tagline, you know, doesn't always have to be the, the job that you currently have right now. It can literally be, you know, telling people exactly what it is that you do. Um, and that's what I've gone and done there. So I am building brands on LinkedIn in Africa. And then it shows you, like I said, make sure that you remember to put down your location so that if people are looking for individuals in South Africa, Johannesburg, I will pop up in that search result as well. Um, and then this is my, you know, short uh, summary that I've put up there. 
And then now it also now goes and says, you know, I must showcase my work. So I also, like I said, there's no end point. So what I need to do is I need to come and start putting up some of my work that I've done, places, you know, that I've talked at, presentations that I've done. And this is the place where you would add that and all of your assets. And then you see here, it starts to give you a nice dashboard and it'll tell you that you're an all, if you're an all-star or not. So my profile obviously is quite up to date. So try your best to get yourself all-star level but what linkedin will do it will it will it will always probe you to update your profile until you get it to all-star level and then this is all of my activity that i have i've got about 1200 followers and then this is what i was talking about i can go and i can manage the people who are following me so if i don't want to see certain people on my news feed i can certainly go and change that and then these are all of the like content pieces that i've gone and you know interacted or in engaged with so yesterday i went and i shared um the the get her in digital post and i went and i put a liner saying i'm really excited and looking forward to speaking at the get her in digital masterclass session and then here at, at twin Leaf media we had a, a linkedin live session that happened two weeks ago and i went and i shared that so for me it's obviously more about you know engaging and networking so i do a lot of short form posts um and then this is where I've added my work experience. So you see here, I've written down that I'm a relationship manager. I work at Turn Left Media. So if you have a company page, make sure that your employees are connected to that company page so that uh, it shows and it reflects there. And I've went and I've shown uh, what I do on my day-to-day, -day, what my role and responsibility is as well. And then you'll see as you scroll down, you'll see my entire work experience. And in fact, I've also uh, put down what I've done before. So, you know, these are all of the places I've worked at. Um, and then what you can do, you'll see, you know, if you've had more than one role in a specific company, it will literally show how long you were in a particular role and how long, it, you know, when you then moved into the next role. And then there's more uh, job experiences there as well. And then, you know, there's a section for your education and all of these little uh, icons here obviously give you this um, chance to go and edit and add wherever you want to. So these are all of my uh, education or certifi certifications that I have. And then these are the skills and endorsements I was telling you about. So I've gone and I've added, you know, what I feel that I'm really good at and what I exemplify as a professional. And then people have also then gone and endorsed me uh, a as well. And then you'll see here that I've also got some recommendations. Luckily, you know, with some of these, I didn't have to request for them. Um, and then, you know, I think there was only one that I went and I requested, but I've got some good, you know, recommendations here that can already tell you, you know, what kind of a profession, professional I am, sorry, and how I work. And also these are ones that I have gone and given in, in turn as well. And then these are some of the accomplishments. So the courses that I've taken, these are my interests. So I'm sure if you go and you have a look at my profile, it gives you a nice holistic overview of who I am as a professional, what my expertise lie in, where my skills are, and what I do really, really well. Um, and yeah, with that being said, please feel free to connect with me. And I'm always more than happy to, to chat in, our, in the inboxes section. And yeah, I'm hoping that everybody did enjoy the session and we'll be seeing some more.